Hello, Harriet Gordon here, and we're going to talk about perfectionism now. Oh, golly, such a big thing for a lot of people, myself included, um, to try to rearrange the way that we approach things about perfection and the idea of perfection and, and the goals of trying to attain it. So um, what perfectionism can look like is different than what I think a lot of people are used to thinking about. Um, I think we're used to thinking about like um, straight A students, um, someone who's always put together, uh, somebody who flawless, graceful, whatever, because they're like perfect in all things. Not necessarily the case. We can see a lot of mess because of overwhelm. We can see a lot of procrastination um, because of the dread of this thing in reality is not gonna match what's in my head. Um, so I'd rather just not even get started. Um, a lot of finished projects to, or half finished projects to um, unfinished because the minute that things start to not go smoothly is when it becomes really uncomfortable um, to kind of like to get through to the end, especially when there are imperfections that is really bothering the person. So some of the ways to try and do things a little bit differently is to look at um, the, the goals that we have in a way of how well does this need to be done? And on a scale of one to five, one being it just needs to be done, doesn't really matter how well. Um, and so I might think about this like, you know, putting socks in the drawer, like, yeah, you can match them up and just throw them in there. It doesn't have to be like, you know, it doesn't have to be Marie Kondo, but if that's your thing, um, maybe just keep in mind about the idea of perfectionism. Um, whereas five, is it needs to be done really, really well to the best of a person's abilities or the consequences are really serious. And what I think about that is um, a pilot has to fly a plane really, really well. A surgeon has to perform surgery really, really well. But again, even surgeons and uh, pilots get days off. So keep that in mind too. So if there are things that you're approaching as a five, like generally perfectionists, people who strive for perfection, try to treat everything at a five. I'm gonna do my best with every single thing that I need to do. It's admirable, but it's also unrealistic. We are only human, we have human limitations. We all need to, you know, sleep and stuff. So <clears throat> there's only so much time in a day to be able to do everything at a five. So based on that scale, try to uh, move some things down on that scale see what you're approaching as a five and see if you can start with a four, maybe even go to a three at some points. Some things, just a one. It doesn't really have to be done that well. Um, and you can take a lot of pressure off of yourself uh, that way. Hmm. Lots of times um, people have an inner critic that is very vocal. And I'm going to have a coaching package specifically on that. So if you're um, struggling with perfectionism and rearranging, reprioritizing things isn't really working for you, you might want to consider that package um, because it's a little bit more involved. Um, but that can certainly give you some better results. But you can start with this and see how that helps. Um, also, increasing distress tolerance. Lots of times we avoid feeling uncomfortable um, because it feels bad, it feels uncomfortable. We don't want to feel that way. Understandable, but it also leads us to do things strictly out of avoidance that would be better off if we just faced it. If we worked through them with our skills, our relaxation, our grounding, um, et cetera. And so increasing distress tolerance when it comes to perfectionism is learning to make a mistake on purpose and sit with it. And chances are, really good, start with a small one because you don't want to challenge yourself too fast, too hard, too soon. Starting with a small mistake, you make it on purpose and you use your skills to breathe through that uncomfortableness.
that's your word. Breathe through it until you get to the point where that feeling of discomfort dissipates and you start to think, well, it's really not that bad after all. I didn't die of embarrassment. Everything's fine. Nobody hates me. Um, you can get there. So sometimes what I'll do with um, clients is suggest that they do something small, mismatched, mismatched earrings, mismatched socks, and go out in public or just start with around the house. Then maybe, you know, around family, then maybe go to the store, one errand and come right back, like building it up over time, building in systematic desensitization and increasing distress tolerance. So those are some quick ideas about the um, habit of striving for perfection and how it can often interrupt our goals and we want you to meet your goals. So maybe um, work on implementing some of those. And again, take a look at the package for the inner critic and um, see if that might be a good fit for you. All right, thanks.